Um, uh, if you've got any further questions throughout the event, then please just pop them in the chat facility and I will uh, field those as we go and we'll divvy them out appropriately to Michael or Austin, whoever um, is most you know, suitable, maybe both of them, to address them. And again, at the end of the session, um, if you've got any further questions, then please just continue popping them through, through the chat box. Um, other than that, I uh, hope you're in a, a good mindset to, to crack on with the session. I'll introduce Michael first, um, a financial advisor at Fiducia, who specializes in financial protection. Um, this will be followed by Austin Johnson, a financial consultant to HD Consultants, who will tackle questions related more to mortgages and property. Uh, we will also have another quick Q&A session uh, after Austin has delivered his, his, well, answered his questions. So I'll start off with, um, with Michael, and I'll just recap on the questions that Michael will be, will be tackling. Um, the first question, in, which you will have had in the email, was, as a company director, I wonder if there is a better way to pay for my life insurance. Uh, the second question is, COVID-19 has made me think more about financial protection for my family. What are the options? And the third one is, is financial protection expensive and will it pay out? So I'll, uh, without further ado, I'll pass on to Michael. Thank, thank you. you very much, Melissa. And uh, thank you everyone else for joining us today. Um, one of the main reasons for today's presentation, if you like, was just to try and make protection something that we uh, speak about more. Uh, my personal belief, amongst other things that we do with the firm, is that protection is something that is often overlooked and hopefully we can add a bit of value today um, in terms of your, your position. Um, th the three questions that I've been given here to sort of discuss, first of all, was that um, COVID has made me think more about financial protection for my family and what options are there? And that's quite true. We've had more people, more inquiries. Uh, I think people have been looking at their own mortality a bit more and putting it higher up on their list of priorities, uh, which, is, which is good. Um, it's very important. I tend to break down protection into a number of different areas. Now, how we go about um, ascertaining a need, you know, people might have a slight fluctuation in terms of what they um, or how they assess someone's need for protection. I tend to break it up into a few key areas which I'll um, talk about. First one is debts, but covering, covering debts for, uh, with life assurance and also critical illness. Life assurance does what it says, you know, if something happens to you, would you want that debt to be left to your family members? Often the answer is no. And also critical illness as well. If you are unable to work or you do have a critical illness, how would you feel if that, if that debt, if that burden was, was repaid? Often that could be a mortgage, um, but also other forms of debt as well, such as a credit card or loan, for example. Um, so I, naturally, my initial conversation around protection generally steers towards debt. Um, beyond that, it's life assurance that may be required above and beyond any debt. Um, lump sums can be a difficult one to judge because you'll sort of think, well, how much cover do I need? And that, that does vary. Um, one area that I think people often do overlook is family income benefits. Now this, rather than pay a huge, huge lump sum that the beneficiary would need to decide how to invest and how to um, use to sort of provide for themselves for, for however long, um, a family income benefit actually pays an, an annual lump sum. And this is very important, something which if you have children, for example, typically you might have a family income benefit until your children are of an age of independence. Family income benefits pay a lump sum annually and uh, rather than give you hundreds of thousands of pounds potentially, you can have a more manageable, manageable amount year on year. Um, so life assurance and that does really what it says in the tin as it were. Critical illness cover as well. Um, sometimes people get confused with income protection um, and critical um, income protection and critical illness. Now typically um, Critical illness will pay out for heart attacks, cancer, strokes, all of the main uh, critical illnesses, and it will pay out a lump sum. Income protection pays out um, for accident and sickness. So they're, they're two different things. And critical illness, if you were to contract a critical illness, it's just really a case of assessing how much do you think you would need you know, to provide you know, a lump sum for any home improvements or anything that you feel like to take away the burden and stress, really, of any... Um, uh, at a time where you just you could do without worrying about things financially and income protection if you are unable to work for a long period of time and you have limited sick pay could you survive on 
um, under 100 pounds a week that stats sick, st statically sick pay would provide and often or nearly in all cases the answer is no so it does really vary on the individual individual circumstances will dictate really what what is required but it's always worthwhile speaking to someone uh, professional to take advice on that cost is also a big factor and i'll come on to that in a moment with one of the other questions but really effectively i always just tend to start with well what is your budget um, and, and sort of gear it around your budget as well uh, one thing which always strikes i always find fascinating is people's people will pay out for sky tv they will insure their pet their phone their car but themselves they, you know you're potentially providing 10 20 30 40 50 thousand pounds worth of income to the family on an annual basis if you had a machine that printed that money in your lounge you would insure it without a doubt uh, you know think of yourself as, as that machine you know you are effectively earning that money and if that was to stop it would have impacted your life in so many ways um it, any retirement plan for example tends to be dictated on income throughout your working life and just because something you know the unexpected does happen do you want your retirement to be impacted or your future to be impacted? So there are a number of different things to think about around protection. And we can go into more, if you've got any specific questions about any type of um, policy, then I'll be happy to answer that. Uh, another question was, I, I'm a director and wondered if there was a better way to pay for life insurance. Something which a lot of people haven't heard of is relevant life insurance. And typically this is used by directors of businesses, but a lot of people haven't heard of it. So rather than paying for your personal life insurance out of your own wealth, out of money that may have already been taxed and, and paid out to you, you can pay, pay your, for your personal life insurance via your business. It's tax deductible as a business expense and um, a very, very tax efficient way of paying for life insurance. There's no, it's not a P11D benefit on the employee as well. So it's, um, there's no income tax, no, no corporation tax, and it's not subject to national insurance. Um, I'm surprised more people don't know about this and even accountants often aren't telling their um, clients sometimes about this particular benefit. And I think it can be very powerful. The net cost uh, to yourself could be a lot lower. And also it's coming via the business rather than from your own, own pocket as such. So it's um, yeah, a very, very tax efficient way of actually managing your affairs. Um, and finally, there's the final question was financial protection is expensive and will it pay out? That one always tickles me. People, uh, when I ask how much you think it will be, people typically don't give me an answer. They don't know how much it is. So that's the first thing. I think that's a myth that people think it is expensive. Uh, it can be expensive um, proportionately, depending on your age and health and things like that. But actually, what's the cost if you don't have this insurance? And what's the impact? I, I, I for one, have a friend in her early 30s that unfortunately contracted breast cancer. And the difference that having a, a critical illness payout to cover the mortgage plus some, you know, some extra cover has made such a difference to her life. Um, obviously, she's in a, a terrible position in one, on one hand, but at least that financial burden has been taken away from her. Um, I have actually got some quotes. Now, I would normally run through this to make this a little bit more visual for you, but clearly today I can't really do that. But um, I just wanted to give a snapshot. I run some quotes today for a 35-year-old male, non-smoker, who's an office worker that maybe has six months full pay, uh, on sick leave, which I appreciate is, is fairly generous, uh, sick benefits uh, or sickness benefits, and uh, they earn 35,000 a year. So I'll just run some quotes today just to give people an indication of cost. So life cover over 30 years, um, up to age 65, level term cover, which means that the sum assured of £200,000 stays the same for that duration, is effectively £13 a month. So, you know, that to most people is an affordable monthly payment. Um, if you wanted to include critical illness with that, so exactly the same policy, but added, adding in critical illness. Now, critical illness is more expensive because it's more likely to happen, unfortunately, throughout our lifetime. Uh, and the, the monthly cost there is £80 a month, and that's for life and critical illness. Uh, and finally, um, family income benefits. I mentioned earlier that there is a, an annual, uh, well, sorry, it can be monthly or annual, uh, but family income benefit payment that pays out £25,000 a year in this case. I've covered for 25 years, um, or sorry, for 20 years until the children turn a notional age of say 25. Um, so £25,000 for up to 20 years uh, is £14 a month. So that potentially could pay out £500,000 if you died in the first year of the policy throughout its term. So £14 a month 
I don't think is, is expensive. Uh, and so there is also one other income protection, uh, which pays £20,000 worth of, of, of income. I mentioned that his salary was 35000 You can typically insure up to 60% of your salary. Uh, you can't be in a better position financially by uh, being off work. So there is a cap on it. And also the benefit is paid out tax free. So that's not taxable. So £20,000 worth of annual income for up to 30 years um, to retirement age is £26 a month. And we've also factored in, it's very important to factor in inflation into that. So over, over the years, as you approach retirement, that keeps going up with inflation. Um, so it doesn't lose its buying power and it's still worth as much in future years. Um, so there are different areas to cover. I mean, I can go through specific policies if people have um, questions around that. But uh, hopefully that gives you just sort of an idea really around um, the different types of policy and um, that will be the likely costs really. As I say, we, there are things we can do to make different policies more affordable, especially around income protection and, and critical illness cover. So don't let cost put you off. Um, it doesn't cost anything to come and speak to us to find out. And um, then you can decide you know, what's important to you and we can tailor that around your budget. I typically will tell people everything that I think you should have cover for and then we can pick your priorities and sort of really nail down and uh, decide what to proceed with ultimately. Um, Thank you, Michael. I mean, it, it sounds it sounds like one of those perfect examples where you just, it, it's not appropriate to pull something off the shelf and, and it's going to one size fits all because it really, it really, it really does merit having a, a personal independent, you know, consultant deal with it. Um, so I'll pass on to Austin uh, next and just to sort of refresh everyone's memory um, of Austin's kind of three example questions he's going to start off tackling. Uh, the, the first one is what's in it for me, which um, is probably quite a cynical question, but a lot of people would definitely, definitely ask it, um, which, you know, kind of ties in with the whole irony of what Michael was saying about why we insure our mobile phones, but don't consider ourselves. Um, the second one um, is, couldn't my family just take over the mortgage? And the third question is, should I put my life insurance policy in a trust? So I'll, uh, I'll pass over to Austin now, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm guessing you can still hear me okay, because uh, we had a little bit of trouble to start with, but uh, we're all good now. So thanks for turning up and thanks for coming to listen to us waffle for a little while. I hope you get something out of it and uh, come back to us with um, some ideas of your own. But I'll attack those questions in the order they came in. So what's in it for me? Basically, when you buy a life insurance policy, you know that you're not really buying it for yourself, you're buying it for everyone else. You're buying it to make sure there's no mortgage, there's no debts, there's no anything in the background when you die. If you've, if you've gone, you want to make sure your family are protected, they don't have to worry about a mortgage or anything like that. They just have to just carry on as normal and hope they can get over the fact that you've died. You're, you're the breadwinner, now you, you're gone. Um, so what they like to do with life insurance policies, they like to try and tailor it a little bit to yourself. And say, for example, you're someone that likes to go down the gym, some people, some uh, insurance companies, they'll offer discounted gym uh, membership. They'll also offer physiotherapy. So if you did fall over and hurt yourself, <coughs> excuse me, they will help you get back and get back in the saddle. Basically, they'll give you that little push um, to help you get back on there. Now they also know that as a working person, you have a bit of trouble going to the doctors because it means you have to take some time out. You have to go away from work to be able to go to the doctors. So what a lot of them offer now is actually like a virtual GP service. So on your phone at night time or in the middle of the morning, if, if you've got a break or something, you can actually get in touch with the doctor 24 seven and talk to him about any problems you've got. And they're a qualified GP and they'll help you talk you through and see if there's any reason you need to progress that further or if you're just being a bit, uh, a bit worried about it, basically. They help you with yourself and a lot of them help you with your family as well. So say your, your daughter was out running, smashed the knee on the floor, they'll also have a look at that and, and tell you if you need to get to A&E or something or the best cause of uh, helping you out. So on that note as well, some policies will also include something like a second medical opinion. And what that means is we all know the NHS is great. It's brilliant for what we pay it for, but it does have its downfalls and occasionally things get diagnosed wrong or the cost effectiveness isn't good enough to give you that extra treatment that you would need to get over the illness that you have. So a second medical opinion means that they, once you've come back from the GP, they will then, you can request it and they will then look after your 
uh, your files and I'll look through it and I'll just double check that the NHS did the right idea, the right treatment and, and everything else like that. Now, if there was a problem and they thought, well, hang on, this isn't going to treat this properly and there is a better one out there, they will then tell you and they will tell their doctor as well and they'll get the treatment changed for you so you get the best that you can possibly have. Now, there's many, many different um, different benefits and I won't go into every single one of them, but a lot of them are centred around what happens when someone dies or when something happens in the family. So you get a lot for yourself. So you get gym memberships, you get looked after as well. Now you also get things like children's bereavement counselling. So if, for example, as a father you died and you were obviously unable to counsel your kids to be able to help them out through that really difficult time, they offer a bereavement service that looks after your children to make sure that they've got someone to talk to and they don't know where else to turn. They know that, I mean, you know how kids are, they know what's going on, but they also know they can't talk to certain people because everybody's acting differently around them. They know that mum's being weird or the family's being weird and they've got nowhere to turn. So bereavement things like this are really helpful for kids. They uh, really help them stop them spiraling into to the darkness, basically, they keep them on the straight and narrow. Um, they also have things like helping with funeral payments to make sure the family don't have to worry about money to get you buried. Um, they'll advance it as well, like on day one, as soon as you tell them, they'll give you that money while the rest of the process is going through for the rest of it. Now, there is also one that I'd like to say, there's only one company um, offering this at the moment, it's an extra bolt-on for about £3 a month, but it's called Global Treatment. And what that does is it works with the second medical, uh, second medical opinion. And if they see that, say, for example, you're diagnosed with cancer and you went to the NHS and they said, right, chemotherapy is the best way forward, we'll do that. Now, you could go back, get the second medical opinion doctors to have a look. And if those second medical opinion doctors said to you, well, actually... There's a better treatment in North America where they've had a 60% success rate, but it costs £900,000. You obviously are not going to be able to just go, right, I've got £900,000, I'll do that. But what this company will do is they will fly you there, they will pay for the treatment, they'll pay for your stay, and they'll fly you back, and also including one other person, so you don't have to do it on your own. Um, up to a million pounds they cover, and you can claim on that twice in the lifetime of your policy, and it costs you £3 a month. And the best thing about it is it doesn't just cover you, it covers your kids as well. So if your kids get something, leukaemia or some sort of cancer like that, they will then do the same thing for them. And to me, that is an absolute bargain. I've got that one myself because as soon as I saw it, I thought it's an opportunity not to be missed. Um, so yeah, but things that go on to your life insurance are there to make your quality of life better because it's not just about when you die, it's about everything else that goes with it too. There's so much more than just dying. And we're quite frail as human beings, and it's good to look after ourselves a little bit. Um, I'm sure there'll be some questions on that one, but I'm not going to waffle on about all the many, many, many benefits you can get. Um, so I'll go to the next one. Couldn't my family just take over the mortgage? Well, kind of tied into that last question, really. Would you want them to? You've just died. And then you expect them to go, oh, I'm going to quickly go and go to work. I'm going to uh, make sure that my family are covered because I'm fine and everything's okay. My husband's dead. So you've got to think about their mindset. Are they going to want to carry on working? Are they going to want to keep looking after everyone? Are they going to want to keep these mortgages running? You might be a buy to let landlord and have 20 mortgages that your wife hardly knew anything about. She just knew that you did it and that was your job, but you've died. She's now got to take that on board. Will the lenders let her do that? Will they agree that she's experienced enough for it? Will they say she's got the income for it? Has she got the neck? Were your, all your um, mortgages, were they ready to be renewed? Were they up for refinancing? Is she going to be able to deal with all that straight away? Um, does she even have time to do it? If you've got kids, if she's got commitments, she might not even have time to do that sort of thing. And everything will just fall apart. And when it falls apart, her income falls apart too. So what can you do? So with a life insurance policy, you can also cover things like covering for a management company to look after the houses, covering for her to have a nice bit of money in the bank so she can then relax while she sorts this out and then get back into it or sell them on if she needs to. A lot of people, especially bigger bustle owners, will say things like, I don't need to worry about life insurance because I'll just sell my houses or they'll sell my houses if I die. It's great. How quickly can you sell a house and how quickly do you get the money? Can they cope for that 
four or five months, maybe even six months until they've got that money. And what if it doesn't sell? What if it's in a position where it just does not sell or they need to spend money on it to get it up to selling standard? That's the sort of thing you need to think about as well as just covering off your life insurance. Um, and on that note, you should always put a policy into trust because you want to make sure that your insurance money that you pay for every month goes to the right person at the right time and the right amount of money gets there. So with a trust, you are directing it towards trustees. And what the trustee does is just carries out your wishes after your death. They make sure that you are, the money is done, sorry, the money is used exactly as you wanted it to be used. You trust them with your finances, hence the word trustee. Now, the other good thing about that is a trust is not calculated as part of your estate. So when probate goes through, everyone knows it drags on for ages up to two years and nothing gets paid out until that's finished. So your family who are desperately waiting for this insurance policy to pay everything out for them are sitting and waiting and waiting and waiting and it could be so long and they, they might be struggling. So a trust will pay out in days rather than months and it goes straight to where they need to go so they get the money to look after themselves with. Um, yeah, and also because it's in the trust, uh, sorry, because it's outside of the estate and doesn't go through probate, it doesn't get taxed for inheritance. So you, you miss out on that as well. And rather than say you were over the tax band, rather than you paying for £100,000 worth of uh, insurance and they get 60000 they'll get the full 100000 when it pays out. And, Thank uh, you, I um, Austin. Have you, I mean, sorry, did I interrupt you there? Have you... No, no, I'm done. I'm good. On that point, I was just checking to see if anyone has any questions that they've popped in the in the chat box on yeah. any of those areas. It doesn't look like you have. If you do in a minute, then that's that's fine. We've still got time to answer those. Um, in the meantime, I did have a few um, emails come in prior to the event with a few supplementary questions, which are possibly a little bit more niche, um, and I'll. I'll try and divvy those out um, appropriately. I think the first one is probably more Michael's area. Um, so I'll, I'll pitch that out there now. Should I put my life, oh, which is exactly what you've just dealt with, but should I put my life insurance policy in, in a trust? Um, I think you've probably just, just covered that. So I'll, I'll go on to, to the next one. Um, how this is actually, this is more Austin's area. I have borrowed more through a further advance, but I never increased my mortgage life cover. Do I really need to? Well, in a very short answer, yes. You've just increased your debt, so really you should cover it. Um, I believe that every pound of debt is a pound that should be covered. So if you've, it, it's the same as if you've gone and taken a loan out somewhere. If you want to cover that to stop your family having to pay it on your death, then yes, extend your life insurance, top it up, or get a new one that covers everything. You might, you might even think to yourself, well, this is the perfect time to review it anyway, because life changes and circumstances changes. And every time there's a change, you should have a little review and it might be the best time. That makes, that makes sense. The same with, with all areas of financial planning, isn't it, with the reviews. Um, so I think the, the second, well, third question um, is more Michael's area. I think this one, how often is it prudent? Well, there's follows on nicely actually from that one. How often is it prudent to review any existing insurance cover arrangements? Um, if you have a good thorough review in the first instance, it should, it should uh, be suitable uh, for some time. But generally, if you've got, if there's any change to your debts, you know, if you take on more debts, if you if you add to your family, if you, if, you're help, if, you, you know, if you become a non-smoker, for example, then that could be a time where you may want to consider reviewing it. So just any, really any, any, real, any life event changes, uh, I've had people come to me before just to check with, whether they're not overpaying for something um, and just wanting just for peace of mind that they've actually got good enough cover and just general peace of mind, really. So there's no right or wrong answer to that. Um, you know, with my clients, that would be part of an annual review. That you know, If we're talking about their pensions and other affairs, that would be part of an annual review. But if you're just coming to us for protection, um, I would say just, you know, if you've got any doubt in your mind, come to us. Or um, if there's any significant uh, change to your... Uh, life then come come and speak to us okay thank you michael um one more one more question we'll just make sure no one's posted anything oh we have got one more actually we've just come in live here um okay this is from john uh what is the position for life insurance if i have a health problem 
I'm thinking of high blood pressure or high cholesterol. Um, take your pick, Mike Austin. Um, well, the position is that you're going to be um, underwritten. Every time a insurance policy is taken out, a lot of the time it'll be offered on standard terms, which means you're completely clean and healthy. You've got no differences to anything else in your health wise. Um, but if there is something like high blood pressure, things like diabetes, they get picked up a lot. They will underwrite you and they'll make sure that they've checked out every risk to themselves as well as you. Um, and then adjust the premiums as is needed. Um, and then they'll come back to you and say, well, we can't offer you for this much money, but we can offer you cover for this much money. Or we can offer the same amount of uh, premium for you, but we'll offer slightly less cover. And then you can decide what you want to do, whether you want to pay the extra or, if, or reduce the cover, or maybe find a different insurer who doesn't underwrite quite so heavily on that particular condition. Thank you. Have you got anything to add to that, Mike? No, I mean, I'm mainly that most, most common um, health conditions generally will still be insured. So don't let that put you off. There's often, you know, a slight increase in the premium, but um, it's, there aren't, I mean, some of the more severe cases, you can have exclusions, but um, again, you wouldn't be committing to anything without knowing exactly what terms you're going to be getting. So again, certainly don't let that put you off speaking to someone. There are also companies that will look at people that have had severe conditions and we can get them placed. Even if you've had a heart attack or something, we can still have that, you know, you can still get cover for it. They might just exclude the risk of a heart attack again. They'll cover everything else. Okay. Um, and, oh, so this is a little, something a little bit different, which we had emailed through. Uh, will a life insurance company accept a non-UK citizen as a beneficiary and or a trustee? Either of you? Uh, I've not been asked that before. So read the question again for me. Uh, will a life insurance company accept a non-UK citizen as a beneficiary or a trustee? I can answer this one if you want. Um, yes, they will, but they'll be taxed on it. Um, whereas it's mostly tax-free in the UK, it will be taxed. Uh, I can't remember the exact percentage, but I think it's around 30 to 40%. Um, so yeah, they will still be taxed on it, but they can receive the money. Okay. Unusual scenario, but um, okay, well, great. I think... That's all the, all the sort of set questions we, we had to tackle. Um, we've had one pop up. If anybody has anything else in the, the rest of the day, or if you think of anything in the meantime, then uh, Mike and Austin will be popping their contact details um, up in the chat now as I speak. Um, so you can always follow up if there's something that you think of later in the day. Um, otherwise, thank you. Sorry for any technical difficulties uh, logging on right at the very start, but we got there in the end. Um, and oh, if, just to follow up, we um, this will be if there's something you want to just review and, and listen to again, this will be uploaded onto YouTube. We'll be popping this um, up there uh, in the next 24, 24 hours or so, and I'll be following up with an email. So if you want to look at it again, watch it again, share it with someone else who might find it useful, um, use it on your own platforms, please go ahead. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to HE Consultants for partnering with us. And um, yeah, have, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks, Mike and Austin. I'm just going to put my contact details on the bottom because I, I neglected to do that, if I'm honest. Uh, no, I saw Mike's <laughs> come up. Super stuff, great, lovely. Well, um, yeah, if nobody's got any other questions, um, I'll sign off, have a good rest of the day. Thanks guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.